What's up, Green Bay Packers fans? Welcome back, and as always, thank you for joining me. My name is Paul Brettel. This I edit over at Dairyland Express, where we cover the Packers, Brewers, Bucks, and Badgers. I also have a new article out every Monday and Friday over at Cheesehead TV. And as it says at the bottom of the screen here, you can follow me on Twitter at Paul underscore Brettel. So for today's episode, we are going to discuss the edge rusher position. As we know, the Green Bay Packers are potentially getting some players back. And when we look at this Green Bay Packers team overall, obviously, there's not a lot of concerns or weaknesses. They're the top team in the NFC, top team in the NFL, and they're getting healthier. However, one of the concerns that I did have, and not just me, I know many did, but one of the concerns coming into the playoffs was the depth of this edge rusher position. Now, overall, the Green Bay Packers have been very good at generating pressure this season by pure pressure numbers. They're top five in the NFL according to Pro Football Focus, and in part that's because of how dominant Rashawn Gary and Preston Smith have been at the edge rusher position. Rashawn Gary finished second out of all edge rushers in total pressures generated. Preston Smith was tied for 10th. And then along the interior, you got Kenny Clark, who is one of the top pressure generators among interior defensive linemen, and even Dean Lowry, his 42 pressures, a career high, were the 15th most among other among interior defensive linemen as well. So collectively, as a unit, the Green Bay Packers, that's been one of the strengths of this team, even with the ups and downs that this defense has had this season. Pressures and turnovers have been the two steady parts of that defensive side of the ball. But as we all know, the edge rusher position, it's one that's rotated through often. Unfortunately, Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith, they cannot play an entire game. So when they are not on the field, then it's been up to Jonathan Garvin, a 2020 seventh-round pick, Tipa Nile, a 2020 UDFA, and Ladarius Hamilton, who the Green Bay signed off at Tampa Bay's practice squad earlier this season once Ladarius Smith initially went on IR. He's a 2020 undrafted rookie as well. So that group right there, there's certainly potential. There's a lot to like about what they can possibly offer. However, they're still raw. They're inexperienced. And we saw that when Preston and Rashawn were not on the field. Green Bay's pass rush presence without them goes without saying, but it did dip. And as a whole, it's not as if either of those three edge rushers, Tipa, Garvin, or Hamilton, were that strong against the run either. From a pass rush standpoint, PFF's pass rush productivity metric, it's simply efficiency. How many pressures do you generate based on the number of pass rush attempts that you had? Out of 193 edge rushers, Jonathan Garvin ranks 77, so not bad. Um, but when it comes to another grading point, Andy Herman of Packer Report, Packaday Podcast, he has his own grading system that he goes through. He goes through and grades every player, every play that they have over the entire season. And Garvin is actually his worst graded defender this season. Tipa is his fifth lowest graded defender this season. And when it comes to the uh, pass rush productivity metric, he ranks 159 out of the one. 93 edge rushers, and Ladarius Hamilton. Hamilton's only been on the field for 64 total snaps this season, so very small sample size to begin with, but he ranks 130th out of the 193. So obviously there's a, a drop-off and a rather steep one in going from Gary and Smith to these three. That's not breaking news by any means, but it is the reality of the situation. And when we look at the playoffs specifically, oftentimes it's the weaknesses, it's those concerns that can be magnified. Everything's ratcheted up a few notches in the playoffs and those weaknesses, those concerns are magnified and they are amplified and can be a reason why a team is sent home. However, Packers have gotten a lot of good news this week on the injury front and all of a sudden this, this concern, this potential weakness, the overall edge rusher depth, obviously we know the top two edge rushers, they have two of the most productive players in football, but the overall depth of the unit is getting a potential huge boost, and that weakness could now all of a sudden become a strength. We knew that Z Zadarius Smith was working his way back. He was back at practice this week, which opened Green Bay's three-week window to activate him off IR and add him back to the 53-man roster. If that three-week window passes and he's not added on, he stays on IR, and his season is over at that point. And then in addition to that, and... The biggest surprise of the week, I don't think any of us saw this one coming. Whitney Merciless, he left the Seattle game with a torn biceps. He was back at practice this week as well. He was uh, 
designated to return from IR. So just like with Zedarius, his three-week window is open as well. And obviously it goes without saying, but having those two in place of Garvin and Tipa is a massive boost. Zedarius Smith, his first two seasons here in Green Bay, one of the most productive edge rushers in football, second team All-Pro. Whitney Merciless, he had been struggling down in Houston. He was actually PFF's worst graded defender in 2020. He had only six pressures through the first handful of games he or with Houston prior to coming to Green Bay. But with the Packers, over the three-week span from week seven, eight, and nine, he generated 10 pressures, a sack, and in that same uh, productivity metric for week seven, eight, and nine, he actually ranked 32nd out of 105 eligible edge rushers. He was used in a very specific role, a pass rush role. On uh, third downs, obvious passing situations, that's when you saw Whitney Merciless in the game, and he was finding success. And obviously, job gets a little bit easier when you have Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith, Kenny Clark alongside you for those pass rush reps. But when it comes to the edge rusher room now, when you have Zadarius and Whitney Merciless to lean on when Preston and Gary aren't on the field, obviously that's a huge boost. And I still expect, as good as Zadarius has been his first two seasons here in Green Bay, I still expect Gary and Smith to be the primary edge rushers. All three are going to be on the field at times as well, but I expect those two to be the primary just because of how well they play. Whereas Zadarius, he hasn't played since week one. He's still coming back from an injury. If he can give Green Bay 25 snaps a game, that's what Jonathan Garvin, on average for the 16 games, was giving the Packers. Whitney Merciless, he, if he can give Green Bay 21, 22 snaps, that's what Tipa was giving Green Bay during his seven games with the Packers this season. Again, a huge boost for not just the pass rush unit, but for this defense as a whole. As we all know, the name of the game in football is getting after the quarterback. And again, Green Bay's done a very good job of that. But now they're still going to have, or they should have, a strong presence, even when Rashawn Gary and Preston Smith aren't on the field. And that's going to benefit the entire defense, including the secondary. So a lot of good news this week. I have this in this article, or I have this topic in an article over at Cheesehead TV, but I just wanted to discuss it here on this platform because I think it's such a, a, a key part heading into the playoffs because like I said not like there's a lot of concerns or weaknesses on this Green Bay Packers team but the edge rusher depth which is a premier position in the NFL absolutely was and all of a sudden it could go from a weakness to a strength just like that so that's all we have for today's video I know it's a little bit of a shorter one but I did think it is an important topic to discuss here on this bye week and given everything that's happened over the last couple of days as always I appreciate you tuning in Check out my work at Dairyland Express. Check it out over at Cheesehead TV. Follow me on Twitter at Paul underscore Brattle. And as always, friends, take care, stay safe, and go Pack Go.